Okay, so welcome everybody. Um, my name is Tammy Gaskell. I'm the director at the Rojan Library and we're delighted to have Pam Doran back for yet another tech lab. Um, Pam has been doing these for the library for a number of years and now we're sharing it with the rest of the county, which is really, really wonderful. We get to have a whole lot of people on these calls. So just to give a little background, Pam, um, is a technology assistant at Putnam Northern Westchester BOCES, and she's worked for years in IT and web design. Um, she has library experience too. She worked at the Garrison Library, the Desmond Fish Public Library, um, where she also worked on IT issues. Um, so I am just going to turn it over to Pam now so she can get things started. All right, well, thank you very much, Tammy. So like I said, I'm a, I adore libraries. So I'm very happy to be here with you tonight. We are going to focus today on Gmail, which is probably one of the most popular uh, email systems that people use today. It's, I'm going to cover what it looks like on the desktop, but I'm also going to switch to the cell phone version from time to time because many people use both. And they're a little bit different. However, the desktop version, which means I'm going onto a computer, onto a browser, and I'm logging into Gmail, um, has more features to um, organize your mail, to check your storage. The mobile version is more meant to be like kind of portable on the go and fast to find things. So I'm going to spend time now on the uh, desktop version of Gmail. But I will switch from time to time to my cell phone, which you know I have here, and I'm going to share the screen like I did last time, and show you um, how certain things can be done on the cell phone as well. So I'm going to get started first. I'm going to be putting up my Gmail on my desktop version, and here we are in my Gmail. Okay, so this is, um, <clears throat> I added a few things in here just so we could uh, see our, my email and what we have here. Uh, let me just go into inbox for a second. There we go. Okay, so in Gmail, one way that it does organize things is by unread and everything else, but there is something that I, it's a big pet peeve that I have with Gmail and they have something called conversation view. I'm gonna just stop sharing a second. Conversation view. Now, if you've used email for the last 40 or so years, you know, you get an email and then you get a new email and a new email and it's just one email at a time. A conversation view, takes your email and it kind of like joins them together and kind of knits those emails together. And then you want to reply to one section. And for me, I can't stand the conversation view. I think it's confusing. I want to like de delete just a small portion of it. So conversation view is something I like to turn off on Gmail, because then it's comfortable. It's like what I remember you know, email being in the past. So if my mom sends me an email and says, hey, Pam, we're having dinner at six o'clock, and I reply, it all kind of stays grouped together instead of a separate reply. So let me show you where to turn off a conversation view. And you can turn it off and turn it back on you know, if you decide you like things differently. So here in Gmail, a lot of the settings that I'm going to show you are over here to the right under this gear. Mm -hmm. And if you click on that gear, this is where you have the conversation view on the bottom here. So if you click that and I reload my page, you'll see that my email suddenly starts looking very strange. I've got things, things have shortened up. I've gotten things, you know, all my unread is like, now I have encryption of poster and I'm like, I can't find my emails. And this here says there's five emails attached in here. I'm like, okay, I, I, I just don't like this. 
So if I go here to the settings and I turn off my conversation view, it goes to the way I like to see my Gmail. If I deleted it, it's in the trash. If I didn't delete it, it's still here. So that's one thing that I find very, very helpful to turn off. And like, like I said, you can turn it off or you can turn it back on, um, decide what you like, but nine times out of 10 people who've been using email a long time prefer it this way. Okay, so when you have your email here, they have a lot of times, many people will have maybe a thousand email, 400 email, 10, you know, it's just a constant stream of email. And you're like, oh, I just, I can't find my items. There are things that I really need. Well, Gmail has this star feature. And if you see the star here, if you have an important email, you can click the star on it. And I'm going to star this one from the tech labs from Tamara Gaskell. So Tammy, over here now to the left, you'll see I have a starred box. If I click that, only the emails that I have starred will be shown in my list. So only those emails that I've flagged as being important. Where are the people on your screen? Hang on a second. Tammy, is there some trouble with the way people see things on my screen? Somebody's reporting that the people are covering what you're doing. So I'm not sure why that would be. Oh, that's the Zoom window. There should be yeah. a little uh, line to the left of that. And you can close that so you can see it. Okay, I'm gonna go, don't worry, Heather Lynn, I'm gonna cover that again. Okay, so I'm just going to uncheck here. I'm gonna go back to my inbox. So here to the left-hand side of my email. So I have an email from Chiquita, who's my friend. What? Karen, who's my friend. I have these notifications here. Do you see just here I have stars to the left? If there's an email that I want to find easily, I can star it. Click the star. Now over to the left. I have a starred label. And when I click starred, any email that I've made important will come to the top. So if you have an email that has a telephone number that you know you're going to need, if you have an email that has a, an important date that you wanna find again, or it has a number that someone gave you, you can use these stars, you can uncheck stars, you check stars in order to organize your mail so that the stuff comes to the top that you might be. All right, so let me look at the chat here a second. Okay, I was able to move it. Okay, there we go, excellent. So I'm gonna go back to screen sharing. So that is your starring, okay, now, Let's say there's an email you really need and it's not something that you starred and it's something that you want to search for. At the top of the screen here, I have search mail and I'm going to search for the word bell because I have a friend named Corin Bell. You can see here, if I click here, I see her name. So this would give me any email that was sent from my friend. Underneath the line is any email that mentions the word bell in it. So these are a few items that have the word bell in it. So if I wanted to find an email from my friend, Corin, if I click that, I will get all the emails that I either sent to Corin or she sent back to me. Now, if I have an e email and it's like, it's an email that I got 
from Corin, and she sent me a form and it was attached to it. And that's what I need. Once you've searched for someone's name or a word in an email, this shows up. And if I click has attachment, you'll see the email to the top is the one that she sent me that has an attachment. It's got a paper clip. And then it gives me any other related stuff as well. I can likewise say it has an image. So if someone who's my friend sent me a picture, I can say, please send me one with this. I can say, can I have something that it's an image? So if it's something from an image that someone has sent me, I can do that. So it gives you some options there to sort. Now to the right, right past this X, which is what would clear my search, I have a search option button. If I click on that, it gives you me even more ways to search. So I can search by subject. I can say if it's a really big mail, if it's something, you know, I think I might have thrown it out. You can search your trash to see if you've uh, thrown something out. And you can also search by size. So if it was a really big email, remember we talked last time about megabytes and kilobytes and bytes here, you can search by there. So. Where did you find all these different searches? Yep, they're right here. So if I'm in the search email and I've searched, like I'm gonna search here for Lisa. If I go over to the right on this same gray bar, I have this button here that says show search options. And when I click on that, it gives me more ways to search. So I can search by things sent to someone. If I want emails that don't have certain words. So it lets you go a little bit deeper to find maybe an important email that you need. You can also use here, just below there, anytime you can make a range. If you know it was an email you got in the last month, you can check it off. And it'll give you things that are either older than a month or any time. You can make a custom range. So older than a week. So you can find, so if you want to try and find an email and you're trying to find something recent, you can use those filter options. Okay, and I'm gonna stop there a second. See if there's any questions. Okay. So next I'm going to go to my cellular version. So let me just share this one out. If you have any questions at any time, please just put it in the chat. Okay, so here I am on my cell phone. Let me go here. Okay, so on a cell phone, as you can see, they kind of compact everything. Those functions, those searching functions still exist on your cell phone. They just make it tinier. So at the very top of my screen, you'll see there's the three lines and then I have search and mail. I'm gonna take my finger, I'm gonna touch search and mail. And then I'm gonna search for Bell, my friend's last name. And you'll see now I have Quarren Bell listed it's the second one listed there and it has a little picture next to it so that means i'm going to be looking for any emails from my friend corin or i can search for just plain bell in the mail or <laughs> belly dance i'm taking belly dancing classes at the hudson valley community college yes um so here along the top just below bell it doesn't have all the search fields that we had on the desktop, but I can search by attachment. If I click on attachment, I can say, does it have an attachment? And if I check that box, Quarren's thing will come to the top because she has sent me 
an attachment. I can do to and from. If I really need to find an email that's important with all those extra filters and stuff, you need to use your desktop version to find it. But if you need to try when you're on the fly and try and find it with your cell phone, they do give you limited versions of that. So let me just I'm gonna close out here. All right, and I'm gonna switch back to Back to my desktop, share. Now, I'm going to clear my search by clicking this X here, okay? And I'm gonna just go return to my inbox. Okay, so, Another way that I love to manage my email and make my life easier is by using something in Gmail called a snooze feature. Now, if we look on my screen, one, two, three, four emails down, I have a dentist appointment. And I'm going to click this email to open it. And you'll see I have an appointment. It's on March 22nd at 3 p.m. Okay, I don't wanna lose this email and I don't wanna just star it either and have it at the top. I want it on March 22nd. I want this email to show up in my inbox as new mail. And you do that by using a snooze function. The snooze function is up here near the top. It looks like a clock. If I click on this clock, I can say I want to snooze this for Wednesday at eight o'clock, or I can pick a special time. So I'm gonna say my dentist appointment's on the 15th, and I want this email to come back to me as a new email at. I'll say it's say 2 30. You'll give me enough time to go. Oh, yeah, I got a dentist appointment. When I click save, my dentist appointment is now gone from my inbox and it's over here in my snoozed. And you'll see that here's my dental group. It's going to come back on March 15th. I have another thing here for June 1st. My Sirius XM wants me to renew my services on the June 1st. So if I have a bill that I wanna pay, I will snooze my bill when I get the email on the day that I wanna pay it. So if I get a bill from like Capital One here and it wants me to pay my bill on April 15th, I instead, I'm going to snooze it for March 15th because I want this email to come back on payday, be in my inbox to remind me to go ahead and pay my bill. I do the same thing with plane tickets, with you know theater tickets, anything that I buy online, I will snooze it and have it come back in the moment that I need it. So that way it's a brand new email right there on the top, easy to find. So that is the, the little used, but I think just manages your life so much easier uh, by using that snooze feature. Right. Yes, snoozing is tremendous, Bruce. Absolutely. Now I'm going to switch to my phone because this, again, you know, not every feature is available on the phone, but thank goodness this one is because it's a lifesaver. All right. So I'm going to share my screen again. Screen. Start now. Okay. So we're going back into Gmail. So we're back here. Okay, so I am going to, let's see, the storm alert. I've opened an email. You need to open your email on a phone in order to see your snooze. Now, again, they're making everything compact you know, to fit the screen. Your snooze is going to be those three dots at the very, very top, just to the right of the envelope that you have there. 
So if I touch those three dots, you'll see move to is there. And then right underneath it is my snooze feature. If I touch snooze, I get the same kind of prompts. I can pick the date or time. I can snooze it to next week. I can snooze it to tomorrow. I'm gonna snooze this one to tomorrow. So I'm gonna press on that sun for tomorrow. And now it's gone. And it will come back into my email when I need it. So that's a way to kind of control your inbox. Some, so you know, you get a lot of newsletters, you get a lot of spam, you get a lot of items that kind of get in the way which I'm gonna cover next on how to clean that up. This helps you get the information or the email that you need in the moment that you need it. Okay. And I'm going to switch this over now to desktop, okay? Now, Screen share, screen share. Okay, so we're back here into my email. Now, if you get a newsletter, sometimes an emailed newsletter is a wonderful thing and you like getting them, like the ones I get from the Rojan Library or the Mark Twain House in Museum. I like to see what they're doing on Zoom. Barnes and Noble, I signed up for this newsletter. It was great. I got a discount. But now they just keep sending me stuff over and over and over again. And it gets in the way of the email that I really want to see. So what they offer you here, I think it's over here. Let me see. Unsubscribe. Delete this message. No. If you scroll down to the bottom of a newsletter, if they're a legit kind of place, you know, it's not spam, it's not phishing, you know, and you can tell the difference because Barnes and Noble's a real place. <clears throat> you know, Coles, Coles likes to send a lot of emails as well. <clears throat> scroll to the bottom of your email and look for an unsubscribe link. When I select an unsubscribe link in my email, it will give me the options of what I want. And I can say, I want no email or please unsubscribe me. And when you do this, those constant emails you may get for newsletters that were maybe important a year ago, but you don't need them anymore, they stop coming. And they open up, it gives you, uh, you know, more breathing room. So you're only getting the messages that you need and the message that you want to see. Okay. So I truly recommend um, that you uh, unsubscribe from emails that you don't need anymore. Because it really is just going to eat up your storage in Gmail. Gmail is not in an infinite amount of storage. You know, eventually you'll get that message. Hey, you're kind of running out of room. You want to buy more? You want to go in there? And again, just like we were managing storage before, they don't tell you the ways to manage your storage and how to pare it down. So let's go back into my email. and. Let's imagine, okay, thank you, Barnes and Noble. You were great while we lasted, but now really it's time for us to separate. And here you'll see the emails have been coming from Barnes and Noble, mail, Barnes and Noble. So I'm gonna search my mail. I'm gonna search for Barnes and Noble. Enter. Oh, that's the one Barnes and Noble. We just tried just Barnes. Okay, so I have Barnes and Noble here. I can delete this. And any emails now that I have that I want to get rid of in a long way. So, say there's a whole bunch of things here from Gus or from Barnes, this checkbox here. If I click it, 
that's how you select everything that might be on your page. And you can delete them all together. You can snooze them all together. You can move them all to your inbox. It allows you, instead of going click, 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 you can pick everything that's there on a row and unselecting it does the same thing. So I'm gonna go into my trash a second here. I think there's more Barnes and Noble in here because I usually throw them out. Let's go to... Okay, so here's all my Barnes and Noble. Barnes and Noble, Barnes and Noble, Barnes and Noble. So I, if I click this, I can now get rid of all of these emails by hitting trash. So after you, if you get something that's constant, like Kohl's or um, any kind of email and you'd want to start clearing them out of your mail, you can do that to sort them, click and delete. Okay, you can do the same thing with your cell phone. I think it's more comfortable to do on a desktop because you can really see everything. What else, if you're only using your cell phone for your email, let me show you. Let me switch to screen. Okay, if I go into trash, search for Barnes. Okay, you can see here, this you can press and hold on email in order to check them off and then you can go ahead and hit the trash to remove a group of emails instead of going in each one and trying to delete them from the trash can inside of there so that's a, a handy way that you can clean up your email All right, let me switch back to here. There we go, so let me clear this out. Okay, so let's go into our settings. The dog just came in. And I am in the desktop version of my Gmail. Over here, under the gear, if I click on it, you will see that I have my quick settings that we kind of went through a little bit to get to the conversation view. But I'm going to click this top button here to see all the settings. On your cell phone, this would be on the left-hand side underneath all of your folders. And I'll show you where to find that in a minute. Here, there's a lot of high-end, wonderful things that you might be interested in or not interested in, but I'm going to take you to the key things that I use the most and I think are the most helpful. So when I open settings, I'm here under general. I'm going to scroll down a little bit. Default text style. This is where you can change what font you use and what size font you use when you're writing. So if you're using your phone and you think the text is just a little too hard to read, you can switch it to Georgia. You can make it a little bit larger. So you can change the size of the text of the items that you're writing so it makes it a little easier to see, especially if you have a smaller phone. If I scroll down a little bit more, there's some more like high-end stuff here that I'm not gonna really cover, but I'm gonna go here to signature. Signature is what's going to appear at the bottom of every email I send out. So whenever I write a new email, it's going to have this picture, my name, my telephone number, and I can set up my signature here. So if I hit create new, I give my signature a name. 
create. I only use one signature, but it gives you the option for more. And anything I put in this text will end up being the signature that's at the bottom of my email. And I'll show you what that looks like when I compose. I'm gonna go back to my inbox. I don't wanna save those because I like my one inbox. If I go to write an email, you'll see here's that item. So every time I create a new item, a new email, I don't have to add my telephone number, my email address. If you're a business owner, you can have all the information about contacting you, maybe your LinkedIn um, address, your Twitter address, whatever you'd like to have. And it saves you a little bit of work by doing that. Okay, I'm gonna close this. I'm gonna go back here to settings. I'm going to go back into see all settings. And I'm going to scroll down. This is where the, the middle part is where we had the default text style that we changed. And then I'm going down here. Here is the signature that we had. And then a little bit lower is where we have vacation responder. This is where you can put down an auto response to going away. So if you're going to be moving um, <coughs> on vacation and you're not going to be able to access email, you're going to be away for a while. The vacation responder, I put in, here's my date. I'm saying I'm leaving tomorrow and I won't be back to March 20th. This is my subject, so I can say, say snowstorm not available. I can put, please contact my office, ask for mayor. And when I save these changes, anytime I get an email, between here and here, they're automatically gonna get this email letting them know that I'm not available, that you can't reach me for a while. So this could be very important if you're expecting uh, an email and you wanna just manage it. If you're definitely you know, someone who's a business person, you wanna know, let them know who's your backup. And then here, only send response to people in my contacts that means when Barnes and Noble sends me yet one more email, it's not responding back to Barnes and Noble saying that I'm out of the office and please ask for Mary. Only people who are in your contacts will get a message. Okay, I'm gonna stop sharing that. See if there's any questions so far. Let's see. Let's see, I love the undo send. Yes, the undo send is a fantastic thing, Virginia, and I'm gonna cover that. And this works in the Gmail app. Um, oh, that was direct to me. Um, you're gonna have to clarify on that one, Tammy, so much I might didn't see what I was doing when you asked that question. And I will go back to where you can change the sign of the font. How do you show images that are received in email? I'll show you that again too. If you're replying, can get your name and info listed. Uh, yes, when you do a reply, it will show that signature file as well, Ken. It will show up. So, all right, so let me go back here a second. Back into share. Let me share my screen. Okay, so I'm gonna go again. If I am in my inbox, I want to go to the right hand side to the gear. I'm going to click on it. And then below that gear is the see all settings button. Okay. And then down below in this, this tab, it's already open. You'll have the default text style that you can change on the same page going down. This is where you can create your signature to go at the bottom of your outgoing emails. 
And then below that is your vacation responder. And yes, your vacation responder is going to have this signature as well. Okay. Now, on this page too, I'm scrolled almost near the top. We have an undo send feature that Virginia loves and she's got good reason to love it. Send cancellation gives you the option of, oh no, I didn't mean to send that. I need it back. It defaults to five seconds. You have five seconds to change your mind and recall that email and bring it back to you. I'm gonna break, make this to 30 seconds. So it kind of gives me the option to uh, show it uh, to you guys. Five seconds, I'm not that fast a clicker. Okay, so I'm going to the bottom here. I'm gonna save this change. And the change is I have 30 seconds now to get an email back that I accidentally sent. So I'm going to write an email. I'm gonna send it to my husband. We call this email. Take back. Okay, so I've written this email. I'm like, mm, okay, I'm ready. Let me send it. And I'm like, oh, wait, no, no, I forgot. I was supposed to attach the form or I forgot to do what I needed to do there. Over to the left. If I go down, I have this paper airplane for my sent email. I can go into my sent email. I can open up this mail. And if I go over here to these three dots, I can bring it back. Oh, nope, it's not there. I moved it. Hey, Virginia, you wanna? I think it's here. Mark is unreported, filter. Where did they hide it? Maybe it's here. Sorry. Move to inbox. Huh, where did they move it to? I'll have to follow up with an email on this because it used to be you'd hit the three dots and you can just pick it right back. But it's not there. Hmm. Okay, then the Asante. Hey, Pam. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, um, I can hear you. When you sent that, there was mm -hmm. in the lower left corner, I saw it. This is what I use all the time. There was a black yep. box. Yep. And it said undo send. That's what I do. That's what you did? Okay. Yeah, and it was there. I saw, I saw it. Oh, you did see it. All right, they moved yeah. it. All right, I'm going to do it again. Thank you, Virginia. Expert assist done by Virginia today. Thank you. So, dim door. Okay. So it was, so just right around here. I mean, the schedule. No, no. No, no. After yeah. you send it, after, oh, after you send, send it, it. Okay. look in the lower left of your there Gmail go. screen. There we go. Cancel. Yep. Undo. Yep. Uh -huh. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank, there we go. So we got it back. All right. And thank you, the wonderful team at Rojan. Okay. But let's look at some of the other sending options that we have here as well, because there's another one that I, I want to cover that I love that's important. Here under send, there's a little arrow next to send. If I click on that, I can schedule my send. So if I wanna write an email, like a birthday message to someone and I don't wanna send it until their actual day, if I click schedule send, I can pick a date or time or when I want to send this. So even if you're making like a newsletter or if you wanna send it on a special day, you can schedule the send. So now, it will not send until March 17th at 8.58 p.m. Another important send feature that Gmail offers on the desktop version is right down here, this lock, toggle confidential mode. If you click on that, 
recipients can't forward, print, or download, or do anything with the email other than read it. So if you want to have a conversation with someone about uh, Sally, and you really don't want Sally to accidentally get this email, turning on the confidential mode locks the email from being forwarded, printed, copied, downloaded, nothing can happen. And you can set when this expires. So in five years, you can also set up a passcode where someone has to put in a number that in order to read that email to ensure that it's going to the person that you want. So you can have a password set there too. So if you're sending a confidential information to someone, this here helps secure your email to make sure that someone doesn't uh, accidentally forward it. Okay. And that also helps if you're sending like a newsletter out to someone and then someone like replies and like, hey, everybody, I'm having a potluck at my house. You know, do everyone bring you something? And then someone replies to all 60 people, boy, I can't wait to come, you know, or you have, so if you use that as well, it prevents people from replying, you know, and forwarding and doing things to kind of clog your inbox. There's also a way that you can blind carbon copy in Gmail, but they kind of hide it. I'm going to show you where it is. Let me go into share here. So again, if I go into compose and I go into two, over here to the right, I have carbon copy where I can add someone else to the email. So it's I want to send it to my husband, but I'm just copying my mother. I can do that. Or I can even do a BCC or a blind carbon copy, which means if I send this email, my husband and my mother will see who's received it, but Debbie will not see who is receiving the email. And you can send an email with just people in the BCC which is a great way when you're sending out a newsletter or you want to uh, have a communication, like if you're communicating for your church or your VW, VFW hall, or even your library. If you want to have the BCC, nobody sees each other's emails. And when they reply, they're only replying to you instead of 50 or 60 people. So the BCC, allows you to send an email without seeing everybody who's on the list. And I think actually there's a good example of that. So like here, the Prodigy Scholar, see here, everybody is listed here. If these were on a BCC, the only person I would name I would see would be Alejandro's name. Okay. And I'm gonna stop. And then we got four new messages, let me see. No, with that security feature on, they can't even copy the text. They can highlight it and they'll go to hit the control C or they'll right click and it'll go, mm, sorry, nope, can't happen, won't work. And you can even test out that security feature and you know, your husband, your wife, your, your family member, your spouse, you can just send them one of those confidential ones, you know, and you can test out the feature and see, see what it's like. Um, and I recommend doing that with any of the security features that you would do. All right, anytime, whether it's Zoom, whether it's computers, you know, find a friend and, you know, kick the tires on it because you don't want to have your security fail after the fact. I would, you know, have one of your family members try and uh, forward the email and see what happens. So just test it out. So you feel comfortable and you can explain what's happening. Okay, so next, I'm gonna go back to my cell phone to show you where some of those features that we just went are on the cell phone.
Okay, I'm going back into Gmail here. Okay, so those settings that I was showing you, like the vacation responder, the size of your email, they're here too. And they're located on my cell phone over to the left, just to the left of search and email, there's three lines. I'm going to click on those three lines. And now I'm going to scroll that list all the way to the bottom. And when I get to the bottom, you'll see there's that gear symbol again for settings. And if I click on that, that brings up a small menu. But if I go just above my email address, general settings, and click that, here's where you see a lot of those same functions that I was showing you. So here, if we go down the conversation view, I can toggle on and off. If I scroll down here, I have confirmed for deleting, auto fit messages, swipe messaging, and then I'm gonna go to the three dots just to the right at the top where it has general settings. And if I click on that, I get my search history, picture approvals. So there's a whole bunch of extra things in here. But again, most of the time when you want to do any kind of settings or high-end configuring, you're gonna to have to use your desktop version. But that's where you find your settings in there. Okay. So I'm gonna pause for a second here and see if there's any questions that anyone may have. Let me see a few options, stop participant sharing. So I'm gonna do just an open question here. Uh, can the recipient tell that it's a confidential email? Uh, yes, they can, because they're gonna notice that they can't forward it. And they will notice that they can't copy it and they can't do it because they'll get messages from Gmail telling them, this is a secure email. I'm sorry, you're not going to be able to do um, any of these things that you're trying to do right now. So yes, they will know that it's a confidential email. So I would recommend in the subject line, even putting you know, confidential. So can they take their camera and take a picture of it? You know, if they're really, you know, goofy like that. Yeah, they could. But I feel that it kind of adds one more layer of security and kind of stresses the importance of, uh, of the item and it encrypts it as well. So if like you're writing your banker or if you're trying to uh, maybe discuss the contents of your will, you can uh, use that as an option. Okay. So I'm gonna go back here into uh, my Gmail and let me share my screen. Now, another item that I like to do in order to manage my inbox, make it a little easier to work with, is I have something called labels. And if I scroll down, you'll see I have one for the Civil Air Patrol, my cruise, SUNY Empire, family, keep, web work. And then I can click here. I can see there's even more that I can get to. Labels here. If I go over to the right and I click a plus symbol, I can make a label so I can sort my email if I want to. So I'm going to call one here, library. Now that I've made a label, I'm going to say correct, create. And I'm going to go into my inbox. And here I have this tech lab Gmail login. I want to file this with my label of library. So I've checked it off. And if I go up here to the top, I have a folder here. And if I click on it and scroll down, you'll see that I now have library. If I click it, it disappears from my inbox. And over here, when I go to labels and go to library, I have my tech lab library. So there's a way there that I can now sort my 
male. So if I wanted to put this and this and this all into my folder, I can organize my email by putting them into folders instead of having everything in one spot here. Okay, so I'm gonna stop sharing a moment. Okay, no problem, Sigrid. So there's folders. So Brian Keeler, Brian, were you able, did I answer, did you answer, did I, did you ask that question while I was making folders or just as I was about to make the folders? Because I'll go back over it again if you didn't get a chance to see it. And you can either unmute your microphone or put it in the chat. You're all set, okay? Cool. Very cool. All right, so the folders are very, 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 very helpful. So we're just about at the end of our time. As always, I thank you for coming. Uh, you don't have to stay until the very bitter end. That's my job. I will do that. And I will stay here as long as anyone needs me. Um, if you have any questions about Gmail that are specific that I didn't cover, I'm going to stick around and I will answer your questions. I will stay here as long as you need me. If you've gotten everything, thank you so much for coming. You're welcome to go at any time. I'm not insulted if you leave you know, when I'm, I'm done here. So Damn. thank you. Yep. But if you have questions, either unmute your microphone or put it in the chat and I'm going to answer all of them. And this is Kathy. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't quite catch where you were able to enlarge the print. Sure. We can cover that again. Let me go into. And are you using your phone or are you using your, on your computer? Um, computer. Okay. On your computer. So if I go here. And I'm on my main inbox. If I go over here to the gear, right? Click the gear, go to see all settings. Mm -hmm. And then on this page, if I scroll down, is default text style. Right. This is where you can pick either a new font or whatever. Font. And then right next to it, you can go to huge if you want. Oh. Color. So you clicked on that little, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, that little text okay. there, and then you go okay. to the bottom, and you have to save those changes. Okay. All right. I just didn't see where you clicked before. So. Now you see when I suppose that's yeah. going to be the same size, but here now, let's see how big it is. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can read it without my glasses. Great. <laughs> you read it without your glasses, so it makes it a little, makes it a little. But the person receiving is also going to see it that big too. Yeah. So avoid you know, all yelling, caps though. because that's really going to be yelling. <laughs> <laughs> hey Pam, once you get something into a folder, how do you delete it after you no longer need it? Uh, the same way, good question, the same way you would do it in the inbox. So once you have something in your folder, and I'm going to go back into here. So if I have, uh, let me see here, I'm going to go into, here's my library folder. Okay. Okay, so I'm in my, and I don't need the Mark Twain house anymore. Right. So I can click here and hit delete. Okay. Or if I wanted to open it first and go, what was this? Oh yeah, didn't need this. You can click the delete here mm -hmm. and that takes it out of your folder. If you wanna keep it and you just don't want it in the folder anymore, like Tammy's login here, mm -hmm. I can go here to move just like I did to move it into a folder and I can move it into inbox. And that puts it back <clears throat> into my inbox again. Okay. So, so you can either delete it out of your folder or you can evict it out of the folder and put it back out into the inbox. If you need what it. about the title library if you're no longer doing it? Sure. And you, how do you do that? So if you wanna just delete the whole folder, you don't need it anymore? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so this folder here, if I go to the three dots yeah, and click on that, I can edit the label, change the name if I want to, or I can hide the label. They don't let you completely delete the folder, but you can hide it. Okay. So if I go in the label list, I'm gonna hide it. So now there's no more library. Great, thank you. All right, so you can hide them. I have a few that are 
20 years old or whatever. Yeah, and you don't, just don't need them anymore. And yeah, and that'll, that'll hide it for you. And then if you do the hiding version too, it's not getting rid of the email, it's just hiding it. So you don't need it in your list anymore. Okay, thank you. Sure, sure. Yeah, qu quick question about, uh, I send emails to people with, with images, JPEGs that I've put into the, uh, into the email and, and people say they, they can't see them, they don't get them. So, okay. so I have to resend them as attachments, but is there an option to show the images? Yes, and it varies from the receiver's email from time to time. So when you send an image, and I'm gonna usually, I mean, I guess you're using this person here to insert the photo inside of the image right here. So here's a cute picture of my dog. So in line, so I'm gonna put in here, insert. So it's like inside the body of the email mm -hmm. that you send to, yeah. send to the person. Yeah, that's correct. Yep, so what they'll have is sometimes like Outlook is really bad with this is they get the email and it hides all images by default. But at the top of their email that they receive from you, there'll be a link that says, do you want to trust images from this email sender? If they click that link, from there on in, every time you send a picture, it's gonna show up on their end. So everything you're doing is perfectly. There's just this one little link. It's a blue link on the top that says images are hidden by default. Do you want to see images from this sender from now on? If they click that thin, that tiny little text, that blue underlined text at the top, they'll see all of your pictures all the time. Okay. Now, I think if this is something that you're sending to, um, you know, out as like a newsletter where you're sending it to a huge group of people. Um, that's going to continue to be a, a problem for you, especially if, you know, the Outlook, I think Yahoo does the same thing too. Um, it's uh, something that you can like send a note at the top of your newsletter that says, hey, if you're not seeing images, please click here. Um, and also like if you have... Um, constant contact or if you're using your mailing list provider it provides a link to an online version of it so it has it with the images as well so the browser version that we're we've been looking at today mm -hmm. doesn't have an option it, it should show the images it'll show the images yeah it's uh whoever's receiving it has to change what they what they get on so I, so is there an option in the browser version that they have to change no, it's not on your end. See, like I'm going to, I'm going to send it to my Gmail, my, I'll show you what it, what it looks like. So I'm going to send this to myself example. And this is my work email. I will use Outlook. So I know it's going to be a problem. <laughs> so, so I'm going to send this adorable picture of my dog. All right. And I'm going to insert it. You can see it's in the body. And I'm sending it. And when I go, I'm now the receiver receiving this email. I just gotta wait for it to get here. Hang on a second. Come on. I have notoriously slow mail. Let me see if this one has the images in it. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure they don't use Outlook. They just use the browser uh, email. Right. Oh, see, here we go. So here, my images are hidden on this. I can't see it. But I get some content in this message has been blocked because the sender is in your safe senders list. If I say trust content, now I see this logo. And here's this that just came through. Same thing. It says some content in this message has been blocked because the sender isn't in your saved senders list. And if I say I trust this content, or I could say show blocked content, here's the picture of my dog. So it's the person who's receiving it that's having uh, the issue. It's not anything that you're doing on your end. So they have to uh, check it off to uh, to see your content. And then once they do that once, Forever and ever, whenever they get the email, it's going to work. 
Um, I have a question. This is Bronwyn Hannon. Um, I, uh, is it, is it better to press the attachment, the paper clip at the bottom to attach an image from your computer file, or can one go into the um, computer file and click on copy and then just paste in the body? Is that, is that acceptable? Sure. Both methods are acceptable, acceptable. The paperclip version, like we were just dis discussing before, that's going to ensure that that picture is going to get to the receiver. When you copy and paste it into the body, you may run into the same issue we were just discussing where they, the receiver has to click that link and say, I am, uh, I agree that I want to see all of the different images. So 100% of the time, it's going to go through when you use the paperclip. Uh, let's say 85% of the time it's going to go through when you copy and paste into the body. Uh, usually they'll write you back and they'll say they couldn't get it um, if it's something like a, a personal email. But if it was something that I, was critical that they got it, uh, I think I would use the paperclip just to make sure 100% that they're going to get it. Thank you. Excellent question. Excellent question. Uh, Carol's asking, what's the difference between archive and labels? Great question. Uh, labels is your own file system that you've created. So I'm having my library folder. I have my um, SUNY Empire folder. So it's putting it in there. Archive takes it and moves it into Google's storage and takes it out of your storage. So to free up space for yourself. And now you have to go to a special place to go get your archive. The folders still stay inside of your storage and your area. So an archive is a place where I'll put like a really big email sometimes just to free up some storage and space. Um, but quite honestly, I rarely, rarely, rarely use the archive. I even have it that I, I made it that it's kind of... Uh, prompts me and says, are you sure you really want to archive? Because nine times out of 10, it's not something that I've used in the past. So an archive too, if you want to search, you have to click that you're searching in your archive. It's I just find it to be a bit cumbersome. Um, it's mainly for those people who have so much email that are really, really big, really, really large. And they're every time they turn around, Google is prompting them, hey, you're out of storage, you want to buy some more? Hey, you want to buy some, you're out of storage, you want to buy some more? Um, I prefer the labels just for organization purposes. Okay. And yeah, multiple labels on your messages. That's a, that's a great idea. And you can even nest labels inside of labels if you wanted to. Yes. Yep. And that's, Virginia actually could probably co-teach this class with me. <laughs> Way to go, Virginia. <laughs> so I have uh, so I... many emails. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I really <Yeah>. like Gmail. <laughs> yeah. I have so many emails too. I really do. It doesn't look like it when you look at my inbox, but I'm telling you the snooze has been my best friend for years. That's really kept my inbox clean because like, if you went into my snooze email, oh my God, there's where you'd find all the hundreds of emails that are just waiting like little soldiers to pop in when I need them. And they just stay out of my way until I'm ready to deal with them. And I do that a lot. Like, I'm like, oh, this is important. Oh, this is a great thing. I want to read it tomorrow. And I move it tomorrow. Some things I just keep moving tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. And then it's finally the weekend and I have time to read it. But that's what I, just, by the end of the day, there's nothing in my inbox. And that's because I've either snoozed it, deleted it, filed it in a folder, and I've made it so it's clean. And by having that clean inbox uh, um, method is what's kept me sane, because you get so much email. You really do. So by deleting what I don't need, you know, being disciplined about like, okay, I'm unsubscribing for this newsletter. I don't need it anymore or deleting email after I read it and I know I'm not going to need it again, or if it's important, putting it in the folder, or if it's something I need to do, but not today, putting it in my snooze 
has kept my inbox at zero unread for at least seven or eight years now. So it's something that really helps a lot. Yeah, snooze is great. I really, it's like, it's, it's the best thing that's ever happened to email, <laughs> quite honestly. Let's see. All right, so I said, I'm going to stay here until there's no other questions. Um, I know when your camera's off, I hate to just, you know, slam the door shut. So what I do is I start a countdown and I count back from 10 to one. And at one, I end the meeting and say goodnight. So if you have any questions, quick, interrupt me or put it in the chat before I get to one. Oh, there's one right there. Susan, you got it. Hi. Um, I probably have two or three, but at least I'm this here. one. I started uh, two Gmails for two different organizations that I'm a secretary for and do things so that at least the emails are all oriented towards that organization. Mm -hmm. um, now I'm finding that the original address that I am using on the one email, I'd like to refine or change, but I don't see a way to change that. It, there mm -hmm. probably isn't. No, you can't change the email, but what you can address, do is, address address is what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, the email address. Gotcha, yeah. gotcha. Um, what you can do is because I have like a bunch of emails too, is you can uh -huh. make the new email that you would like to be. So say if I have glory pam at gmail.com here. Uh -huh. And I decided, well, that's not what I want anymore. I want to be Pam underscore Duran at gmail.com. Yes, yes. Create the new email that you would like. And let's pretend you are, you are I am sharing my screen. Let's pretend that this is now my old email. Right. What you can do is I'm going to go over here to settings. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I'm going to go to see all settings. Yep. And then over here, I have forwarding. Pop and IMAP. Uh huh. If I click that, I can say any mail that comes to here, I want to forward to my new email address. So I'll add a forwarding address and I'll say, okay, my new email address is Pamela oh. underscore. Wow. And I mean, I haven't created this yet. I'm just doing this example. Right. Grand. I have a name gmail.com. And when I hit next, mm -hmm. it'll send it and I'll get a, a it'll get a link confirming that it works, cancel, and then I can ignore this old email and oh, any yeah. email that comes in now will uh -huh. automatically be forwarded to that new email address. And then I can just use that as my new email address. Uh. And, then, and then everything you do from here on in, just keep using the new email address and eventually it, that it will just die a natural death without losing it. Right, right. Emails. It, but it probably wouldn't hurt to send anyone a little blurb when hmm. you get an email saying, this is the new address. Um, yes. Okay. Absolutely. Right. But, I, you okay. know, since they don't charge for the Gmail address, I mean, I would just keep the other one going and let it keep feeding the, the new one, oh, yeah. too, you okay. know, because you okay. never know with a business. Like, I have a friend who's been in business for 20 years, and he finally got an email address at his business address. And he'd been using something at warwick.net for like years. And like, there's old advertisements. You never know where they're gonna, you know, an old message post somewhere where they'll find that old email address. So just, you know, that would be my recommendation anyway. Thank you. Should be quick. Uh, Joanne, yes. Uh, it's a snooze it. Did you want it on the cell phone or on the desktop, Joanne? You can put it in the chat or unmute your microphone. I don't know if she's still here. Oh, desktop. Okay, we're going in. All right, so here, share. So in order to see the snooze feature, let me get back into inbox here. You have to open up your email and then look for the clock right here. And you hover over to say snooze. And then you can pick, it gives you a few defaults. And then you pick pick date and time if you wanted to get specific with it. So you can just snooze it for tomorrow if you wanted to. Okay, so that's where you find it. But you have to open up the email all the way to see it. 
Okay. Now, Susan, you said you had two or three? Let's see. Wow, 24,000 unread emails. Holy cannoli. <laughs> Gee, you know, I could show you if you if you want them only to be the really red ones, I could show you how to do that. It's, uh, there's a way to do that too. If you uh, if you care, sometimes it's a, it's a source of pride how many unread emails you have. But if you go here and hit select, you mm -hmm. can pick here, you can go mark as unread, or you can go through and say, mark everything as read. So you can swap it there. So if you click on that and then make everything marked as read, then only the brand new emails that you've been getting lately will show up as an unread email. So if you have a cell phone and has 24 plus, <laughs> comma plus over the icon, that'll bring it down so that only the, you have a list. It only indicates when you have new emails starting today. And it doesn't delete the email. It just toggles the, the difference off for you. There you go. Let's see, desktop. Old forwards from another address I dealt with a decade ago. Yeah, it's, it's, I get that. But I said, if you wanted to do that and just make them all red, you don't even have to really read them. It'll just flip them over to the, from the dark side to the light side. <laughs> so that way you know exactly what you have is, is new. You don't have to try and remember. Okay, last time I looked at my email it was 24,968. Now I think I have 24,979. So I must have gotten a few emails since then. You know, you can switch it away. No, oh, thank you. I'm glad I could help you, Virginia. <laughs> you helped me tonight. So I'm glad I could send one back to back at you. Um, okay. I'm going to anyone else? Susan, you said you had two or three. I can't think at this moment um, <laughs> because of you. you the, the labels are wonderful because I have that on another, um, I still am a fairpoint.net, mm. taconic.net person, and I really want to get away from that. Yeah. So, um, but anyway, uh, but that had labels and I was like, oh, those are cool. Um, and uh, uh, so you really helped with organizing and that's what I needed to do. Oh, wonderful. Well, if there's any other questions that come up, I'm going to put this in the chat and I know that Tammy will share it as well. Right. Um, oh, BOCES is calling. I wonder if they're closing school. Excuse me a second. <laughs> <laughs> mm. <laughs> Holy mackerel.